Good evening, everyone. This is Brother Brandon coming to you live from Fayetteville, Arkansas, with another with a very special edition of the Fishers of Men video broadcast. And it is good to be here this evening. And uh, tonight, um, I don't. Uh, well, tonight's message or topic is salvation equals change. And uh, tonight's message is going to be. Um, a different kind of message because I'm not going to be preaching so much as per I'm just going to be just telling and showing and um, <clears throat> I'm going to take this opportunity tonight to say some things and then back that up with what God has done in my life. So this teaching is more going to be more of a very kind of like a mini devotional uh, slash um, um, testimony, okay? So this is going to be something that's going to be a little bit different tonight, but I want to be a blessing to you guys, and I want to just kind of lay some things out <clears throat> because there's this, I well, and, and we'll get into it when we get to it, okay? So... There's some ideas that are that's floating around that's not biblical, and so with that, I want to be able to clear that up and be able to show you from my testimony that that some of the some of these ideas that are floating around is contrary to the Bible. Amen. So tonight we're going to be talking about salvation equals change, and um, so that's tonight. And uh, so uh, <clears throat> I don't have any announcements. Um, as for prayer requests, uh, prayer requests, uh, if you can pr uh, continue to keep me in prayer, uh, I kind of have my ups and downs, mo up, up, my up moments and my down moments, uh, more, it seems like they're just, I have more down moments than I have up moments, so, so please pray for me, pray for my videos, pray for my ministry, uh, pray, uh, that, um, you know, things would, uh, you know, pray that God will take these videos and do with them as he wills, uh, you know, pray that, you know, there would be souls that might, that will be saved as a result of this, uh, pray also, you know, you know, for, uh, you know, people's lives to be changed. And that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. And that's what I hope for these videos to be, to do is to, to see lives changed, to see lives come to, uh, to see people come to Christ or come back to Christ, whether it might be you're either lost and, and <clears throat> are in need of salvation, or if you are saved and just need to come back to Christ. <clears throat> Amen. So pray for lo for lives to be uh, changed as a result of this. Um. I know there's a fellow sister that wants prayer. Uh, she wants prayer for her family, so pray for uh, pray for this fellow sister and her family. Uh, this particular sister has a lot of discouragement at times, so keep her in prayer. Um, you know, keep her in prayer. Pray that God would, you know, answer prayer. You know, and uh, pray that you know God will comfort this particular sister. Um, into her family, <clears throat> and um, also pray for. Uh, we got some other brothers that need prayer, you know. Um, so keep them in prayer. Uh, and uh, I got there's a. I've got some family that watches that watches my broadcasts and and my <coughs> and my um. In my video, so pray for them as well. Um, and uh, I think that's going to probably be it for prayer requests. If you have any prayers or praises, you can feel free to mention them in the comments section if you like. It's completely up to you. Um, you know, it's it's all if you're comfortable or not. Amen. So, um. I guess with that said, I think we'll just go ahead and begin tonight's uh, tonight's topic. 
Now, if you have your Bibles with you, turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and we're going to read in verse 17. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. It says, there, if, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, what do we see? What do we see in this particular verse? Well, as, well, first of all, let's let's read let's read like half of this here. Okay, it says, "Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, new," which means there was a change that happened. Okay, so it, so if anyone who is truly in Christ. He is a new creature. All things are passed away. Okay? All things are passed away. And what does that mean? That, what that means is, is there's a change that took place. Okay? A per, you have, you used to have an old nature, but when you came to Christ, you had a new nature. There's a change that took place. Okay? It's not... And you and you realize it says all things are passed away. Okay, so it doesn't matter what sins you've committed. Okay, if you come as you are to Christ and you accept Him, and you put your faith and trust in what He did for you at the cross, and you get born again and filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Okay. Old things are passed away, which means there is a shift. There's a change that happens, and that change is you go from death to life. Okay? Bible Christianity is a changing, is, is a change, is, is a religion of change. And it's a it's a it's a religion of change for the better. Okay, when a person becomes born again, they get regenerated. Okay, which means the Holy Ghost does a does the work within them and changes them to being a new creature, a new man. Okay, God's not going to save you and keep you where you're at. He's not going to do that. You are predestined to be in the likeness of Christ's image. <clears throat> and believe it or not, that work is a lifelong work. Amen? It's a lifelong work. Now, you have some really crazy mindsets going on. You have this mindset, and this is particularly one of the big ones, is that people have this mindset and idea that, oh, I'm saved, so now I can go off and do whatever I want. I can go off and live like the devil and, and still go to heaven. No, you can't. You cannot. Once you're born again... You will not go off and live like the devil. And by the way, I'm going to say this, <clears throat> okay? If you think that you can get saved and go off and live like the devil, I question your salvation. I'm not saying you are saved and I'm not saying you aren't saved, but I will question it because... And in, in, in 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Listen, when old things are passed away, you, okay, first of all, if you are in Christ, you are a new creature, which means you have, you are a new man, you are a new woman, you have new desires, Okay, you have a desire to want to serve and love God. You have a desire to not want to sin. You'll still sin, but your desire is to serve Christ and to please Him. 
Amen? <clears throat> that's your that's the new man. That's the new creature creature. That's the those are new desires. Okay? Old things are passed away, behold, all things become new. So all you people that think you can get saved and live like the devil, you clearly don't know your scripture very well. Because if you're truly in Christ, all your old, old things are passed away and done away with. Okay? Yes, we live in grace, but grace is not a license to sin. As a matter of fact, if you guys have been following the if you've been following our Roman series, I'm going through the book of Romans and uh, going through uh, and we just got done talking about this. I believe it was in Romans chapter 6, okay? Go and watch what Romans go if if you want to, go and watch Romans chapter 6 and see what that says about um <clears throat> about as per as per, should you sin, just because we're under grace, should you continue to abide, abide in sin? No, God forbid. Okay, so grace is not a license to sin. But when you become born again, okay, you become a new creature, you become a new creation, you become, you have new desires, and you have all, and all these things, you have... In all new, th you get all new things, okay. So if you get all new things, there's no reason why you should be living like the devil. You can't. If you're truly in Christ, you won't live like the devil because if you fall short in sin, God's going to chasten you. Okay. He let's go to Hebrews. <clears throat> Hebrews. Hebrews chapter. Uh, Hebrews twelve. And uh, we'll start in verse 5. So Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5. And ye have forgotten the exhort exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art, when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, where of all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. You know, that word bastard in, in, uh, in, in Hebrews 12, the word bastard is talking about an illegitimate child. So which means, if you claim to be saved... There's and, and there's no change and there is no change in your life and or if you don't receive chastening in your life, then you are an illegitimate child. If you claim to be if you claim to be born again and you don't receive chastisement for your sins, then you're not a child of God. Not according to scripture. Because God will chasten his kids. Amen. He will chasten his kids and he will do it because he loves you and he cares for you and he's bringing correction in your life so that ye might repent. Okay. Bible and Bible Christianity. Okay. It's all about change. It's all about change. And that change is going from being dead to alive. It's going from where you were into eternal life and chastisement is a huge part of that change <clears throat> Bible Christianity is about a good change Luciferianism is about a wicked change it's a bad change so either way you're still going to get there's still a change that takes place if you're on the devil side you will get changed but that change is for the worse. If you are a born-again Christian, that change is for the good. Bible Christianity is a religion of good change. And by the way, let me say this. The 
Bible Christianity is the only religion that is of good change. No other religion compares to what Bible Christianity is. Okay? If you are in Christ, you are a new creature. And if you are a new creature with new desires... You will not live like the devil. You won't. So all these people that think that they can get saved and live like the devil, I probably bet you they're not saved. Because if you were saved, you'd have new desires. And those new desires point towards who? Jesus Christ. Amen? And I'm going to tell you something here. The main point of what I'm getting at is that when God saves you, God's not going to leave you where you were. He's going to take you. He's going to work on you. He's going to, he's going to perfect you into the image and the likeness of His Son, Jesus Christ. Because we are predestined for that. As believers. Okay? Now, with that said, I, I want to take some time this evening, a little bit of time, and I want to share with you a testimony, my life's testimony, okay? I want to share something with you guys that hopefully it will make sense, okay? Now, <clears throat> at the age of 17 years old, it was around Christmas time. It was around it was December of 2007 when I was 17 years old. I came down to Arkansas where I'm at and uh, I'm actually in Fay I live in Fayetteville, but I went down to Salem Springs, which is not too far from here, okay? I was visiting my mother and I was visiting my stepdad. Okay? Now, when I was visiting them, um, it was around that time that they introduced me to Christ. That's when I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. It was December of 2000, uh, December, I can't remember the exact date, but it was around Christmas time, that's what I know, but it was December of 2007, so I was 17 years old. One year before 18. How about that, huh? So at, so at 17, I got saved. Okay? Um, but when I got saved, I did not start out with a King James Bible. As a matter of fact, I was given, I was given a, a translation that wasn't the King James. It was a, it was a New Age translation. Okay? So, I got saved, I got a Bible, okay? Now you might say, well, Brandon, what in the world? Why didn't you get a King James Bible? Why? Well, first of all, I was a, new, a newborn babe, so I didn't know anything, okay? Secondly, you know, the fact that I was ignorant, at least I had something on my person to read, Okay? It may not have actually been the Word of God, but God could take that and use that for the good, okay? Now listen, uh, so, in two, and, okay, so 2007 is when I got saved. Uh, 2008, that next, that following year, in that, in that time frame, in that, uh, I, think it was, I think it was spring or summer, where I got my call into ministry. I got my call to preach. I got my call uh, to ministry and stuff. So <clears throat> with that, I was really, I was kind of one of those that needed to pray. I wanted to pray about it to see what God would say. Okay. So I spent years, well not years, I spent time praying about this. I'm not sure exactly how long, but I spent time praying about it. 
And at this time, I grew up as a Lutheran. Okay, and actually even before I got saved, I grew up as a Lutheran. Okay, so I grew up as a Lutheran. I got sa saved at, uh, at 17, got my call to, to preach uh, that next, that following year. Okay, so I'm still kind of in the Lutheran church. Now, if you know anything about Lutheranism, Lutheranism is really Catholicism, folks. I don't want to bash anybody, okay? But Lutherans are Catholics, okay? Do you know what Catholics are? Catholics are, it's Babylonian witchcraft. So what God took me out out of was Babylonian witchcraft. Lutheranism is Catholicism, but it's repackaged differently. Just a little bit. But Catholics and Lutherans are really essentially the same thing. They're just packaged differently. They're just repackaged differently and all that stuff, okay? Now, I've heard people say, well, Catholics can get saved. Well, sure they can. But you can't be a Catholic that gets saved and stay in the Catholic Church. You just can't. Come out of her, my people, lest ye be partakers of her sins. Amen? When God saves you, He's going to call you out eventually. So don't think that you could be a saved Catholic and still remain in the Catholic Church. It doesn't work that way. Okay? It, at least for my case, it didn't work that way. Okay? Because I was, I was still in the Lutheran Church when I got saved. Okay? Now, here's the goodness of God. God did not just leave me there. As a matter of fact, what God allowed me to do was I stayed in the Lutheran Church till after I got confirmed, which I was kind of a late bloomer, okay? So I got confirmed at a later age. But confirmation is like religious works, okay? It's just, you count it as dumb, that's all what that's all confirmation is. It's religious works. Okay? So I got confirmed and went through all that stuff, but then it was after that, shortly after that, um I left the Lutheran Church. God took me out of the Lutheran Church. Okay? He took me out of it. And um when he took me out of it, it was around the same time that God had put elders in my life. Okay? Elders that were King James... I mean, I had an elder that was a King James believer. Okay? Studied the King... I mean, studied the King James, believed the King James. I mean, it was just King James... And God took me out of the Lutheran Church, took me out away, uh, started, started to take away all the, the icky stuff out of my life. Okay? And, by the way, I should mention that when I got saved, all I ever wanted to do was talk about Christ. And, that, and that's what we read here in 2, 2 Corinthians uh, 5.17. If there be any, if there, if therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. So I had a new desire. I want to talk about Christ. Well, before I got saved, I didn't want to talk about Christ. When I got saved, that's all I want to talk about was Christ. Okay, so God saved me. He got a hold of me. Gave me a calling into, gave me a calling in ministry. Gave me a calling to preach. 
That's when God began to work on me. God took me out of the Lutheran church, took me away from the New Age Bibles, and just started begin working on me. Still is, by the way. God's not done with me yet. So after I left the Lutheran Church, God began using people. God began using uh, elders of mine to teach me about the King James. And what happened was, God eventually took me out of that. When God took me out of the Lutheran Church, he put me into a non-denominational megachurch. Okay, so I was there for a short time, and 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 at the same time while he did that, God had used elders in my life. And this one particular elder he used, uh, and he introduced me to teachers like Pastor Mike, um, Doc Marquise, which I don't know if you know who Doc Marquise is. Doc Marquise is a fellow brother in the Lord who who was. He had like so many generations of his family in the Illuminati. God saved him out of that. And he had a whole ministry exposing about exposing what Freemasonry is, the Illuminati, exposing all these different things about the Illuminati. He had a whole ministry where he made videos on this. He has some really good teachings. If you, if, if you get a chance, I think you, hopefully they're still on YouTube, but you check them out. Okay. Now, uh, unfortunately, brother, uh, brother Doc, he he passed away. I think it was about three, two, three years ago. I don't know how long it's been, but he passed away and is actually now with the Lord. Okay. But I had an elder who who taught me the King James, who 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 brought me to King James preachers. Okay. So. At the same, so when that was going on, God took me out of Lutheran church and put me in a non-denominational church. And it just happened it was a mega church. Now you might say, well, Brandon, why is God bringing you to a mega church? I mean, good grief. What's the matter with you? Well, let me tell you something. At that point, I've already learned a lot about symbolism and 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 I've learned about God's Word. I've learned a whole bunch of things. Okay? What to look for and all that stuff. Okay? So when I got into this church, um, I kind of, you know, I didn't really know much until I started going and attending and all that stuff. And and unfortunately, I was, I was baptized by a heretic there. But then, but praise God, it was... Uh, December 17th of 2017, it was 10 years, it would, have marked, it would have marked 10 years that I would have been walking with the Lord, that I actually got baptized into a body of believers. It's 10, 10 years after getting saved, that's when I actually got baptized. Okay, so that's, that's kind of my official baptism point is about let's see what was it today is so it's the so it'll be oh wow so be four years coming up in december so december 17th of 2021 it'd be four years since i've been baptized okay so anyways neither here nor there so i went to this mega church and you know i learned some stuff you know, and they, I've come to find out that that church was very heretical. And I refused a lot of what they believed. Okay, just refused it, didn't believe it. Okay, I thought I had maybe certain gifts and stuff like that, but I was just blowing smoke through my teeth and lying to my own self. Praise God, he kept me from, from all that nonsense that they do and preserved me okay so i got into this um so in, tw in tw uh, 2009 i graduate from from uh from high school go to go to a, a community college for a couple years 
And when I go to this, when I went to this community college, you know, I uh, I kind of went there for generals, you know. But even after, but I know, and even then, I kind of knew. I mean, I knew what I was going to do. I was going to preach. Still, though, even to this very day, I still get confirmation that I'm called to preach. It's amazing how even after all this time of, you know, the time that I prayed about it and all that stuff, and even till now, God still confirms with me to this very day that I'm called to preach. It's amazing. God, I mean, this is, I'm telling you, this is like God's goodness and his mercy, okay? I don't deserve any of it. I don't deserve, the only thing I deserve is to be in hell. But God is so good merciful and so graceful even still to this very day he there's times where god will just sort of confirm to me that that's what i'm supposed to be doing is to preach okay but anyway so i went to this two-year college was there for like three years and god told me to leave so when i left that college it was around that time that it was actually around 2012 uh that i went to this mega church and so I actually started going to this internship program. Well, that was kind of like not very fun, but it was actually a learning experience for me, okay? It was, it was to learn what not to do in ministry. And believe me, I learned a lot during that time, okay? Uh, you know, during that time, I mean, I, I was uh, put in a course that was that dealt with youth ministry and I was kind of the one to take attendance and record all that. Okay. So that's what I did. Now, when I was in this program, okay, when I was in this program, um, I refused to wear casual clothing because when I went to these youth services, I wore a suit. That's what I wore. And the youth pastor had a big problem with that and said that it's not this is not a business meeting. It's to it's 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 worship. It's not a business meeting. Which is kind of an which is kind of an oxymoronic statement, knowing that this mega church was all about money and all about attracting the youth. So I refused to wear ca uh, casual clothing and just wear a suit. And as a result of that, I got kicked out of that course. So I could only attend the morning, you know, the, the morning uh, stuff. And even that, I didn't even really care about the morning stuff all that much. They were praying in so-called tongues and a whole bunch of other nonsense. And I just, I faked it and kind of, you know, whatever. They, they just... And they they eventually kind of figured me out that I didn't agree with what their what they did, but God sustained me there for a whole year, and after that I got a little like certificate of completion, a little diploma, I guess you will, uh, basically graduating after a year, and uh, <clears throat> that's what happens. That's what happened when I stuck it out. Okay, now I'm going to tell you something. Okay, God put me there to test me to see whether I really truly loved God or if I was just making things up and he did it and you know what I believe to this very day the good Lord did it to prove something to me that I really did love him that I do have a heart for him and there are times I just don't really have I just don't feel that at all but we don't go by feelings we go by faith so um uh, let's see here. Let's see. I'm gonna. I wanna. Oops, that's not what I want. Um, oh, I can't remember the verse. Let's say prove you. Let's do prove. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I 
Oh, I can't find it right now. So, I'll, but anyways, but basically, the you know God says in this word that uh, these false teachers and prophets, God has allowed them to do what they do to prove you to see whether you love Him or not. And that's what I really believe. God brought me through that time, um, was to show that you know that I I really did indeed love Him and not just giving lip service. Okay, so. After that internship program, God brought me out of that mega church, that non-dominational church. And at this time, around it was around this chunk of time that I had set my foundations on the King James Bible, that I set my foundations on, you know. So God brought me from being a Lutheran, and He took me out of Lutheranism. He took me out of the New Age Bibles, and he first stuck me, and it's funny, it's funny how God works, because I think the first thing that that, that God did was he, he brought me to a place to accept his word. To accept his word. So God showed me things about the King James Bible, why the King James Bible was right, and all the other New Age Bibles were wrong. Okay, so he dealt with that and got me planted into his word. So you see, I went from using a New Age translation to the King James. See, when you get saved, God takes you to where he wants you to go. You're not going to live like the, when you're in Christ, you're not going to live like the devil and live how you want. Okay, God brought me out of Babylonian witchcraft he brought me out he brought me out um, the New Age Bibles and he first planted me in the King James okay then what he did was he took the, he, he while I was planted here he took me he then took me out of the mega church and eventually brought me, then what he did was he eventually brought me to a Baptist church. And oh boy, did I fall in love with the Baptist church. I'm a Baptist preacher, that's what I am. And God then introduced me to... Not just a, the Baptist church, but he introduced me to the old-fashioned hymns. You know, my favorite hymn is He Hideth My Soul. That's what, that is one of my favorite hymns. He Hideth My Soul. But he introduced me to, um, <clears throat> he introduced me to the hymns. He introduced me to the, you know, he, he I'm already in the King James Bible. He introduced, he introduced me to uh the Baptist Church, the old hymns. And ever since then, God has sustained me into the Baptist Church, into a good Bible preaching Baptist Church. Okay? And uh so I went from being a Lutheran to a non-denominational to a Baptist. It's like going from glory to glory. Okay, you know what? I'm going to share that with you guys. Let's see. Glory to glory. Oh, that's interesting. In 2 Corinthians 3.18. But we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord. God took me out of Witchcraft brought me into the Baptist Church. He took me away from the New Age Bibles and planted me in the King James Bible. And to this very day, he is still working on me and not done with me yet. Amen. And I'll tell you something too. The reason why I share this testimony is because of this. It's to show you that when God saves you, he's not going to leave you 
where you were. He's going to bring you out. He's going to change you. And he's going to, he's going to continually make you a new man. And you're going to continually get things cut off and regenerated. Now what I mean by that is God's going to trim things off. He's going to bring you out. He's going to cut things off out of your life. He's going to prune you so that you may bear good fruit. That you might be a new man. And I'm going to tell you something. The, the, the correction, the pruning, the working on all that stuff is a lifetime thing. Amen. So, for all of, for all of you guys that think that you can live like the devil and live how you can get saved and live like the devil and live however you want to, you are completely and utterly wrong. Because when I got saved, God took me out of the Lutheran Church. I didn't stay there. God put me into a non-denominational church. I didn't stay there. God took me out of that. And God finally brought me into a Baptist church. That he left me in. God didn't leave me with just a New Age Bible. He took me out of that and put me into the King James Bible. God took me from where I was, showed me the truth, and planted me into the truth. I didn't stay where I was. I didn't live like the devil. I didn't do. I didn't do any of that. Actually, as a matter of fact, when I got saved, every time I fall short, I was always repenting. Still do. But when I got saved and did something I know I shouldn't have done, I'd feel guilt about it. So that's that's not that's how you know you're saved. If you're saved and you're doing the things that you used to do, you're going to feel remorse. You're going to feel guilt about it. But that's good because God is convicting you and chastening you so that you might repent. So the guilt is a good thing. Not a bad thing. Amen. The guilt is a good thing. So when you get saved, you, you're not just going to go off and live like the devil. You're going to, God's going to save you, and He's going to bring you from glory to glory. He's going to constantly work on your life. He's going to bring you out from, from where you were, and He's going to put you in a better place. And that's exactly what God did for me. I, what, I didn't remain a Lutheran. God took me out of the Lutheran church and put me in, in, in a Baptist church. God didn't just look leave me in a New Age Bible. He took me out of that and put me in the King James Bible. He did that because, you know, he did that because that's what God does. When he saves you, he's going to bring you out and he's going to put you in a better spot. And when he puts you in that better spot, he's going to, he is going to work on your life. Continually going to work on in your life. So in conclusion, I want to say this and we'll, we'll be done. Looking back in my life, everything that has happened was for the good. It was. All the trials, the tribulations, all the things that I started out in, You know, and I'm going to tell you something for any of you that knew me five years ago, you know, I am not the same person I was five years ago. I wasn't. Do you know why? The reason for that is because. Christ took my life and he changed me. It's 
still is. I'm not the same person as I was five years ago. Okay? I'm not. I'm not the same person. When God saves you, He's going to bring you out and He's going to work on your life. We are predestined to be in His image. In Romans 8.29 For whom He did foreknew, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Amen. We are predestined to be in his image. Amen. Listen, guys, I hope this was a blessing to you. Um, that's, all real, that's all I really have for tonight. I just wanted to take some time and be a blessing and share with you that share with you my testimony because there is a lot of misconception going around that if you get saved or once you get saved you can do whatever you want and that's not true at all okay in my life that's not true because when I got saved God took me out and he changed me he changed me into the man that you see today and guess what five years from now I won't be like I am now I'll be different because God is going to continually work on my life. And once I go home, I'll be perfect. Amen. Well, you guys, that's going to be it for tonight. I love you guys. I hope this was a blessing to you. Um, on Friday... Don't forget Friday, we're going to be in Romans, we're still in Romans chapter 7. We still got to, we still got to finish. Hopefully we'll finish uh, uh, Romans 7, but if not, we'll have to split it up again. But we're going to be getting into Romans chapter 7 and hopefully finish it on Friday. And next Sunday we'll see how things go. I'm not sure how, it's, how what we're going to be doing on next Sunday. Um, got a busy week, I got a busy uh, week this week, so yeah. Be in prayer for me on that. Okay? So, um, other than that, I think that's going to be it. Um, I love you guys. God bless you. You guys have a blessed night. And we'll see you on Friday. God bless you guys. See ya.